What I love about psilocybin is that it causes you to hallucinate so effortlessly at relatively low doses and without a lot of accompanying, you know, sweating or tremoring or physical discomfort. And DMT is even more powerful as an inducer of visionary states. Now, people who have never had a hallucination, and if you read the literature, think that a hallucination means little traveling lights or colored lines or the kinds of things you see when you press on your closed eyelids. Those are not what I'm talking about. That kind of thing is called hypnagogia. Hypnagogia also includes chorus lines of dancing mice, little round candies, falling leaves, snowflakes. In other words, the flotsam and jetsam of the mental ocean. What I'm interested in are full field, 360 degree visionary scenarios of jungles, deserts, ice fields, ruined cities, machine scapes, and a whole bunch of other stuff which is not so easily dropped into any category of experience that we're familiar with, but highly organized, three-dimensional, self-sustaining, transformed modalities that you cannot pour language over. I mean, when you try to say what it is, all you can say is what it isn't. And I find that tremendously affirming because to me, and I guess this is important to me, that is the experience which proves that this is not self-generated. When I take a plant and it shows me something I could previously not have imagined, then I know I am in the presence of the other because it couldn't have come out of me. I mean, if you insist that the Niagara of hallucination caused by psilocybin is generated out of the dynamics of your own psyche, if you insist that that's true, then you are unable to explain what your own psyche is. In other words, you become unrecognizable to yourself in that case. And if you are unrecognizable to yourself, you are not yourself in some sense. So I prefer to believe that it's coming from the outside, that mind is a field, but it's not being generated in the neurons of the brain.